Welcome back to Big Flats, Texas. It's still April here and we're still in the middle of the hay contract on field five over by our cattle farm. Right now we're starting, I'm starting off by coming back here to get a wind rower and you can see that um, what we're doing is I'm switching out auger wagons and I'll explain why I'm doing that here in just one moment. So if you're not up to date with the series, there'll be a link to the entire playlist of Big Flats, Texas down in the description below and I'll try to have one in the comments as well last time so we've got our wheat planted down on field 16 we have crops planted here on you can see right behind the building there on field one and then over by our farm in field 10 and everything's pretty good so we took up a contract doing hay on a neighboring farmer's field and i remember last episode i said that i was going to finish it on my own but then i remembered because i we i kind of just i was just finishing up the tedding of the grass but then i remembered wait we still have to windrow and bale it all and i think that uh i'm gonna go ahead and include all that because that's a lot of work and i want to try some interesting things with the baling let me show you why we're selling this because this yeah first of all see we've been using this to load seeds and fertilizer into our seed drill oh, i'm sorry into the air cart but this only holds a total of 8,000 liters, which is only half as much as one of those tanks. And the auger in this is quite uncomfortable to move, even with this tractor, with my most cab forwarded tractor. So what I've done is, let's go ahead and sell this. And I just remembered that I turned off my triggers. Uh, anyway, so let's sell this. Okay, good, it sells for 12,000. That's great because I bought a replacement for 10,000. So that is excellent. Here is the replacement wagon we bought. I can't believe I had this and didn't realize I had it. It's because it was in a different menu, a different part of the store. And it's a John Deere, so it matches the rest of our farm. And this holds right about 15,000 liters, which is the size of about the size of each of the tanks on the air cart. So this will hold enough seeds to fill it or enough fertilizer to fill it. And well, yeah, I don't know. I just forgot that this was available. So we're gonna be using that but not right now because we're not planting right now. However, I can't wait to use that because the field tender that we were using, I just sold, was a real pain. All right, so we've got to get this equipment down to field five where we're doing our hay contract. First thing we need is the, is the wind rower. And this is our JCB. Yeah, it's funny because among the rental equipment was a JCB tractor, an 8330, just like this. But uh, so we got two of them temporarily, but ours is the one with the wide tires. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get this wind rower down to field five. And yes, there's definitely something interesting I want to do with the baling, something I want to try. I've been wanting to try, and it's part of the reason I got a flatbed trailer. And well, we'll see that when we get there. But that is baling. First, we've got to wind row it all. So I'll meet you guys down at the hay field. Okay, so yes, the baler and the the baler is the only piece of equipment that we need down here, I think. We have a baler, but the one they are loading us is bigger and... Well, it's bigger and fancy. You may as well use the one they loaned us. I went ahead and I had the other 8330 go ahead and go down to the shop. So it's waiting for us down at the shop. So I can use it to bring down the baler when we need it. They also loaned us a bale loader, but we already have the exact same one. So the only piece of equipment we need to bring down now is yeah, just the baler. And the other JCB is down there, so when we need it, we can bring it down. For now, we've got a lot of, yeah, about six hectares. Is that what this, yeah, I believe this is a six hectare field that we need to windrow. And I've never used this windrower. I don't usually do a lot of grass work, but now that we have cattle, it's going to be a good idea. And working for this neighboring farmer, I think his house is down yonder, down there, past those trees. Well, working for him... This is, uh, yeah, we're going to have hay left over that we can keep for ourselves a little bit. We should. Look forward to seeing how much. Let's see how this guy works. I've not used this one yet. All right. Contract work, yes. Yeah, somehow our hay was spilling all out over there. All right, yeah, this has got a pretty good working width. This should go pretty fast, especially if I could kind of... I'm wondering if we could keep this in like constant motion. Well, I'll take 
I'll, I'll take this eastern end of the field up here off to make it easier to turn around. And try to get uh, better rows here. Now, one thing I want to do with the trailer, uh, the loading the bales. We got to transport all these bales down to the sale point. And, well, that's kind of why I bought this tractor in the first place, making like 20 trips back and forth with, because uh, our bale loader holds, what is it, 14 bales. And making like all those trips back and forth, I needed a quick tractor. Well, one thing I was thinking, and this is what I did, you know, I bought that flatbed trailer. And I was thinking, what if I got the flatbed trailer and what if I could back the bale loader up onto the trailer and unload them 14 at a time onto the trailer and then strap them all down and take them down like that? I'm not sure, to be honest, how that's going to work, but that's what I want to try. And that should be an interesting experiment to see how that unfolds. Should work fine, assuming that, you know, I can stack them seven high on the trailer, no problem you know, and get them strapped down and, you know, stacked up there and strapped down before they start falling over. We'll see. Because that's how we're going to try to do this. Yeah, this right here is going to go fairly quick, I think. And this is kind of our only real task for the month. Let's see. I don't think there's other contracts. There's a fertilizing one, actually. But, uh, field four... There's a fertilizing one. Which one is field four? I'll have a look at that. Well, let's get this done. Well, I am kind of curious to know, so I can start thinking if I want to do it or not. Field four. Let's see which one that is. Let's get this stopped. Right there. Field four. It's, that's... Oh, yeah. Actually, there's the guy's house I was referring to. He owns this farmland out here behind our cattle farm. Feel for it's forty thousand dollars to fertilize that. We might take that contract on. I could hire actually I could hire a worker to do that. You know, that's true. That would be good something good to get to kind of have working in the background so we can kind of do that in between doing this. This is gonna go pretty quick, but it's gonna take a minute. Wow, this wind rower is wide. I think this is the widest one that you can buy. And I, yeah, I'm going to use one this wide. So I'm going to work on this hay here a little bit. And and I'll work. I'll, I'll get, I guess, our, our new John Deere 8R. I'll get that set up for fertilizing over on field four. I don't know why not. Yeah, there's no reason we can't kind of do both. And here, I guess we'll go ahead and let's get a north-south rope put in. Yeah, so because I don't want to trample our grass. Our grass, yeah, it looks like I just cut it. Oops, there we go. It's been a couple days since I've been up to the farm, so I'm trying to remember what, you know, what I was doing, what I wasn't doing. We got to get this, you know, this, this contract will be finished this month. Yeah, it's been a couple days since I've been out here. And I forget when we cut our grass. Surely I cut our grass last month. Yeah, it looks like it'll be ready next month. I was just seeing where our grass was at. All right, so let's get this row here. And now we'll have an easier working space to turn around in and such like that. But yeah, I can definitely use that whatever it was 40 something thousand and that's pretty good income I mean it's not going to take that much fertilizer I don't think to do that we may have to refill the tank a couple of times but that's all profit let's actually go ahead and get started on that so I have something else to switch back and forth to off of this whoops kind of messed up our uh, messed up our windrow a little bit there I didn't think about that. Yeah, as they say in Ghostbusters, yeah, don't cross the streams. Okay, let's park this back on the field here. Actually, I could have him work while we get... Tell you what, let's have a worker kind of do this a little bit. So that something's being done. 
while I swap over to fertilize. Oh, and we should probably take the contract. That too. Alright, so he started on that. Now let's go ahead and I darn it. Let's go ahead and take this contract here. So field four, fertilizing, whatever kind of fertilizer we want. We have our own equipment. Make quick work of this. Wow. See, for this contract we're doing now, this thirty-eight thousand dollar contract for bailing, we only had to pay like fifteen hundred dollars for the equipment. For the JCB tractor, for the 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 tether for the mower the tether the wind rower the baler the baling wagon everything was like fifteen hundred dollars to rent that for this field they want four thousand dollars just to rent those basically two pieces of equipment no thank you so we're just going to go ahead and accept contract we'll use our own equipment she's trying to rip us off there all right so let's get our own equipment and get started on this first we need to refill this and try to remember where I parked the 8R. Well, I see it. Oh, there it is up there. And it's got the sprayer attached to it. Was I using it here? Yeah, how is our own fer field fertilization doing? That's actually a really good question because I completely forgot. We still need to fertilize our own field one. Yeah, I saw the tractor parked up there with the sprayer attached to it, and it made me think, oh yeah, we still need it for our field, but that's okay. We can do our field and their field. First, we need to fill this back up. Luckily, when was it? It was a couple episodes ago. I paid all that money for seed and fertilizer. Yeah, it was, I don't know, it was an ungodly amount. I paid over $100,000 for seeds and fertilizer to do these fields. Well, luckily, I bought liquid fertilizer as well so we have enough to fill this tank back up whoa had a little skiddy moment there around coming around the corner how heavy is this thing yeah it's quite a bit heavier than the tractor all right so we should have enough to fill this up let's get this started filling i'm gonna find the 8r oh yeah it's behind the building back there liquid fertilizer yeah well we've got that's enough to fill our tank a couple of times. So let's get that started filling. And I saw it back here with the sprayer. There it is. Our new 8R. So we'll get this. This was left out here. Oh, it's 60% full. Okay. Well, let's get this folded up. Yeah, that header and trailer. I mention it every time because every time I have to drive by it, it just it, it doesn't stay on the trailer, so we'll just try not to notice how incredibly messy that looks, but it won't stay on there. But I still need the trailer because I have to use it to, obviously, to transport the header, so I still need it, but it won't stay parked on there. And I could park them separately, but still that trailer will move all around on its own anyway. It's large, huge annoyance. All right, let's go ahead and get this filled and start heading out there. And then we'll, we can drive, we'll drive the trailer out there behind it. Let's get this out there. We'll bring the big trailer behind it. Let's see, I don't even know how big field four is. I've never done any work on it. And I don't know how much work we have cut out for us. So yeah, our new tractor is looking nice. Well, it's still pretty shiny looking. I'd really like to get there's a really nice self-propelled John Deere sprayer with something like a 36 foot or 36 meter boom on it something to that effect a little out of our price range right now but one of these days I'd like to have that and of course I you know I was thinking a bit I think it was a couple episodes ago I said something about there may only be five or so more episodes in the Big Flats Texas series now it's probably not that's definitely not true there's a lot more work I want to do here because the end goal is of course we need to at least make this field here, this big limed one, at least needs to be part of our farm. I will not. Have, we're I'm definitely 
we are going here until we have the biggest farm in Big Flats, Texas, and that field has kind of been like the icon of this map. I have to drive around it all the time to get from one farm to the other, and yeah, that's definitely going to be part of our farm. We'll see, well, it's a couple months from now, we'll be able to sell our soybeans that we harvested last year. That profit, I don't know. I could fathom a guess, but it's going to be pretty good. Oh, <laughs> I just came to the cattle farm by instinct. We're going past the cattle farm. Not been down here very much. Going past the cattle farm. Down here. How big is this field? This is field four. Should be. Should make sure of that. And yeah, it is. And wow. That's bigger than I thought. 22 hectares. It didn't quite look that big. That's about... 50 acres didn't look that big. Yeah, it does. It is. All right. Yeah, that's something like a little over 50 acres, I think. All right. Wow, where do you even start on a field like this? Yeah, which way is it bigger? Oh, it's pretty square. So let's get some space started. I guess, which way do we want to run? I guess it'd be easier to run east-west. I think so. So then let's start by putting one a row up the north. If I can get this thing back down the field without hitting that stop sign down there. All right, good enough. And I thought I had it backed up enough. Apparently not. There we go. There we go. And are we on the edge of the field? Yep. All right. So let's do. We're gonna do a north run here up the west side, and then we'll cut across the north and then come south down over there on the east side. Get us a nice box within which to do all this work here. And I wonder how our wind rowing is going. We'll have to do... Yeah, I may as well leave that worker to... Oh, I see. Oh, there he is. He's back there between those rows of trees. May as well leave him to do the wind rowing because we're going to have to do the bailing all ourselves. And again, yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be very... That's going to be the fun part. That's going to be the interesting work is getting all the bales. And then I can't wait to see if my idea of loading them on a flatbed trailer works fewer trips down to the bale cell point which is way down there right over the if you look right over the cab of the tractor it's that building way down there so fewer trips would be preferable yeah this I didn't realize this was a 22 hectare field but I guess by the price we're getting paid for it that makes sense From my experience, we're going to need to refill this. It's going so slow. You can see it's, I mean, it's it's using the fertilizer so slow. You can see it's still at 90%, but if fertilizing our own field has taught me anything, it's that this will run out. So I'm going to want to get the other tractor down here. Let's try not to run over his yard as much as possible with our big John Deere. All right, now let's get this going east. Fertilize his lawn just a little bit for him. All right, yep, get that lined up good. We're going to get to the end of this, go south, and I'll grab the... I'll grab the 8110 and bring it up here with the trailer. Because, yeah... We still have plenty of fertilizer, but it's going to run out for sure. Not the 8110. The, I think it's the 7810. And the reason I... Someone commented on a recent video, 7810, about regarding the John Deere 8110 being a good tractor. And yeah, I have... I do have it here. I could buy it, but... Uh, yeah, someone made a comment on it, so I, I thought I'd say, yes, it is a good tractor. I have it. I love that tractor. And I accidentally, yeah, I was referring to the 7810. 
is going to come out here with the fertilizer. I got all mixed up in my head, and that's that's why because I was thinking of that tractor. I do like that tractor a lot. It's a little, it's kind of for this farm. It's a bit small. We already have the seventy eight ten. It you know that's kind of our that's our smallest tractor. Something this size is kind of more what we need, but I do like the 8110 I'm a fan of that I, I like it it's older it's kind of the older style and it's a cool tractor all right we're just about done yep just about done with this row oh and there's actually plenty of room to turn around here great so let's actually go ahead and just for the moment set him on this and I'll be back here with the trailer and so it's full up And there was something I was going to check on the way, but now I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Once we get up there, I'm going to see how our wind rowing is going. Because it'll be soon. It'll be time soon to start the bailing. If we get this thing moving down the road. Yeah, I thought it was heavy before I filled it. Now it's really heavy. And we are finally up to speed. Yeah takes a minute to pull this trailer uh, we'll be taking some weight off it here soon when we have to refill so I'll just hold this up and park this probably just off the road here on the west side of the field as we already have that row taken off mm, now I'm gonna park this on the south side because he's going east to west I'm gonna park this on the south side I was gonna take off that north south row over there on the, uh, the eastern portion but there's when I got down there, yeah, we saw there's plenty of room to turn around. How's our wind rowing going? I guess he's a little over halfway done, so we can start bailing. Yeah, that's right. The baler's down at the store. We've got our own, but may as well use theirs. Maybe it's I mean it's newer and bigger, maybe it'll be better. We got we have an old John Deere that we bought used. Alright, so you know, let's maybe do park this down here somewhere so you don't have to drive the tractor as far. Yeah, you know what, though? He's not going to need it for a minute, so let's just leave it down here. I'm trying to park it in a place that where he won't collide with it and where it'll be still handy. So let's park it over here. Contract on field 4 is 20% complete. All right, so let's park this here. Let's go ahead and grab the baler and see how he's doing on the wind rowing. All right, so down here at the store, this is his JCB. Let's get, yeah, that's a big fancy baler. I can't afford one like that. The one we have, the John Deere baler we have that works just fine. It's just a little older, but may as well use his, may as well use his shiny equipment. All right, finally back at the cattle farm. For some reason that drive seemed to take longer than usual and get started bailing and well our flatbed trailer is down at the main farm but we can get started bailing yeah so let's see I wonder if we can I mean we males will use the biggest bales possible bigger bales right less bales less yeah, <laughs> bigger bales is better. I know that our bale loader will load 240 centimeter bales, so we may as well do that. Oh, crap, we got hay down here on our lawn somehow. So let's start down here. Whoa, big hump of hay there. fields never look that big on the map and they don't even necessarily look that big when you wheel the equipment out on them but then you start working down a single row and I look down there yeah so really my baler works just as well as this if I'm being honest mine the baler that we have does 240 centimeter bales and oh this one's neat and shiny though All 
Alright, let's see here. Can we... Yeah, let's get over... The, let's get... I'm gonna go uh, north-south down here so that we're not constantly running over this. And we got one bale hung up in our chute. I'm trying not to sling out as I turn around. And you know what? Our baler is going to be better. This pickup is missing a lot of straw. So let's actually finish off this this bale. Yeah, this pickup is not as wide as ours because, look, we're missing hay. Sorry, hay all the way down this row. I'm used to running the one we have in our farm, our John Deere. So... Older John Deere is better than newer Coon, I guess. Just trying to get... I don't want to waste any hay, so I'm trying to just inch it forward and get a complete bale. There we go. Alright, empty baler. Let's get the pickup up. Let's get this locked away. Yeah, our baler is better. That thing was missing it all, all the down the windrow, and I'm not spending the time to turn around and pick up little scraps. Wow, this is a big field. <laughs> when you floor it and you're going down the field, it can seem pretty big. Yeah, you'll see immediately, in comparison, how much better ours is. Bigger is not always better. And let me pop this up and change to the same size bales. There we go. All right. Ours, uh, ours has more character. Yeah, ours has more character. And, of course, yeah, if you pay, if you look, you'll see it has a wider hiccup. We won't miss any spots with this. Here, let's go ahead down this row. We won't, we shouldn't have any problem with missed spots with the John Deere. See, that coon would have missed a lot of this. Okay, that, that hump is understandable. That was a huge hump of hay. But that coon was missing it down the windrow itself. It was like barely wide enough even for the windrow. And this will just devour all of that. <laughs> Race of the JCBs. Let's see if we can head him off at the pass here. I don't know. I think he's probably moving faster than us. No, maybe not. Big, big hump of hay. Here, can we get all of that? Probably not. Actually, uh, yeah, this thing does have a pretty wide pickup. Whoa. I was about to unload my hay right into him. Is he done? I think he might be done. Whoops. Oh, no, no. What is he doing? What is he doing? Dude, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Get off my field. What was he doing? He was perfectly fine. And then he... Yep. Well, it looks like he's done to me. So let's just park him somewhere. See, I was watching him. I was just... I was sure he was going to stop. You know, I was waiting for him to stop. And then... Yeah, it looks done to me. We'll park it over here. In case there is a spot we need or something. But I don't think so. I'm not sure why he didn't realize he was done. So how big are these bales? Well, 240 centimeters, yeah, but how much hay do they have in them? 8,000 liters? I think that's a, that's not much more than, well, yeah, bales we were doing here at the end of this row. I'm going to check on the fertilizer, see how he's doing on his tank, how far has he made it down the field. Okay, we may only have to fill him once. Wow, these are long rows. I've had time to set the controls down and 
have a drink. I look back up, and we're still just now getting at the end of the row. Let's, whoops. Let's drop this off. Out of the way. We're here. And I'm going to go check on the fertilizer. If I can get this bale tossed off. There we go. And he's got 20% of a tank still. All right, so he'll be good. So we can go ahead and get our north-south road done here. This is the road. Yeah, this is the road that that, that coon baler was missing parts on. And that's not even a big wind road. If it was missing parts on this... No, to be fair, <laughs> I make that remark and then I instantly miss a little zigzag in the uh, thing here. I want to get it all because, you know, whatever's left, we get to keep. So I want to get as much as I can here for us. Oh. This is the other JCB. This one doesn't have the the bumper on it. Don't have the the bail pusher on this one. Yeah, that is. You know, I have that bail pusher on the front of our JCB, and I hardly ever use it for its purpose. And right there, it would have been nice to have it. Wow. Yeah, that coon baler it missed a lot. that dumped off and get flipped around down here and let's get straightened out on this there we go yeah actually at the end of this row we'll be right up there I'm gonna swap these tractors out use our tractor so we can have the bail pusher and then I'll run over there and refill fertilizer tank as long as we're yeah we're still right here by this corner of the field we'll do a little tractor jockey and go over there and refill him up ours is cooler anyway because ours has bigger tires all right so let's go down here to the 7810 and refill out there as we probably need it. Hey cows, I thought about adding some more cows. I thought about putting, getting some cows in these pins down here to kind of give it a more even and spread out look. The thing is, here's what I thought about. Each of those pins is designed to hold a hundred head of cattle and keeping just those two pins full is really draining on our resources. Now, of course, there's only a total of 24 cattle down there. I don't have to fill it for 100, but if I have you know, each one of those pens has a separate feeding trough and separate everything, and that would just be really inefficient, you know, to have like six or eight separate pens with cattle when we only have like, say, say I just want it to look better, and so we have like 12 per pen. That would look better, certainly, but the thing is with that, if we have, say, eight pins of cattle and only 12 head each just to spread it out and make it look more even, then I'm filling up eight feed troughs and eight water troughs. And I was thinking, I don't think it's worth it. Oh, wow, we got here just in time. He just ran out. Awesome sauce. We'll just drive down there and... We shouldn't have to move the tractor at all since there's no crops in the field. Well, there's no growth in, on the field. We can just run the trailer right to him, fill him up, and, and uh, get him going again. The trick is, of course, getting this close enough. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, there should be a way to do that. All right. Can I block the axle on this trailer is the question. Yes. That's going to make this a pain to maneuver, though. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah if I had a bigger tractor maybe yeah that's not going to work dang it if you're wondering what I'm doing what I'm struggling with here <laughs> I blocked the front axle on the trailer so that I could back it up 
but this tractor will not pull it that way. See, because I want to get it close enough to refill the tank, and I had to have the axle straight to block it, but that's not going to work. So, we're probably just going to have to, because my experience is refilling with this is that it has to be pretty darn close. So, you know what? How about we just suck it up and pull the tractor over here to this? Yeah. Oops. Let's just fold this up and drive it over there. You can't pull it behind. See, you can't pull it behind this sprayer because the the distance between the back of this tank and the boom that distance is enough that it won't register and refill. It has to be closer than that. That's why I couldn't just swing it in behind. If you are wondering, we got to get it a little closer from my experience. But yeah, we got so much big equipment. That's what we need. Yeah, we need the big tractors to pull. I mean, that little seventy eight ten barely pulls that trailer pretty much. So it looks like we're going to be using a total of about 8,000 liters. Because he has a 4,000 liter tank. Yeah, he has, so he just used one tank, and he's probably going to go through another tank. Or he should be right about... Yeah, he'll finish on this tank. So he's going to... So it looks like we're using about 8,000 liters of our own fertilizer. And so this is definitely costing us some money. But we're still going to come out at least 30 grand ahead on fertilizing this field so that's a good profit I think minus what we're paying the worker but I don't pay my workers much yeah a little trade secret I don't pay my workers much all right so let's get down with our tractor so now we can move bales out of the way more effectively if we have to without getting the tractor hung up on them and where did I leave the baler good question oh I left it right at yeah, at the end of the row on the field is where I left it. Let's get back to this. This baler is a... Is this the... It's the 100. Yeah, John Deere 100. I like it. If you're... And if you were interested, it's the... It's... Because it's a really good baler, and I, I've looked at a lot trying to find good ones. It says right here, it's called the it's called John Deere Balers. It comes with these two balers, really good and affordable, and affordable, yes. I'm curious to see how the baling will. How yeah, I've, I've mentioned that before. After we finish the next row, I'm going to try that out loading on the trailer. I want to see if that's going to work before I start like planning ahead too much in my mind what it's gonna work. Let's see if we can load this on the trailer after we finish this next row. Curious to know if my trick will work. And I should make sure that we're selling these at the right place. There's only one, I think, bales sale. Well, not really, there might be yeah, let's make sure that we're selling at the right place. Lone Star Bales. Okay, I, I wanted to make sure. Yeah, so it is the place directly all the way up. Yeah, on the, wet, on the west side of the area in front of us where the store is, right by the store. The thing is, if I can load them on the trailer, I'm not sure how to get them off the trailer. Hmm... Wheel loader. We'll see. Whatever saves us trips down there would be very handy. That's why I want to try this. Why do we have all this mist section down here? The wind rower didn't do a very good job. I make, a, I make jokes about hiring cheap workers, and then I see work like this where the wind rower didn't get. I noticed some of that at the other end, and I didn't really account for what that was. What that was. It was causing that. All right. Let's get some of these bale uh, loaded, and then I'll grab the trailer, and then, but then there's a the matter of, will any of this work like I have it planned? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that trailer is shiny. I washed it after, well, I washed all the equipment 
before winter when I put it away. It looks brand new. But this trailer has seen a lot of use. Oh my gosh, a lot. So is this tractor. 15.8 hours we've put on this tractor since I bought it. And now, yeah, see the bail, the bail pusher. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a necessity for, for this part. Except when it gets hung up on a bale. Oh, you know what? I put the wide tires on this. I haven't bailed since I put the wide tires on, and they are making a slight difference getting in the way of the pickup. I hadn't thought about that. That rear tire is just a little bit wider than the front tire on the JCB. All right, one more bale, and then I'm going to go grab the truck and the flatbed, and we can see if my plan is going to work at all. And even if it, assuming it does, will it, what will be the unloading process at the store? May as well pull the trailer out here. So I'm going to go grab the truck and trailer. Now we have a truck at the cattle farm, but as our flatbed is down here, we may as well bring it over with this truck. I haven't used this flatbed yet, not since I bought it. It was on sale sometime last year. It was, I was, it was uh, discounted. I was able to get a used one. Oh, you know, while we're in the truck and I'm looking at the fuel gauge, let's get this fueled up. Wow, we got six hours just on use of the truck. Yeah, we've been here a while. I checked a little. I checked around when I started recording this episode. And as of right now, we're about 75 hours on this map. That's how much time we put here. Where's the trailer? Oh, yeah, it's right around this corner. All right, now let's see if my plan will work. I don't see why not. As long as I'm careful when I back it up on here. Yeah, I don't see... Whoops, we can't drive that way. Yeah, I don't see why this wouldn't work. Great trailer. Yeah, it really is. I'm, and this is the this is what I had in mind when I bought it. It's obviously not wide enough to move a lot of my big equipment. But the bales... Don't see why not, except stacking them seven high. Well, I'll meet you down at the cattle farm and we'll find out. All right, so we'll just park this out here on the field. Get the ramps down. And let's see how well this works. <laughs> this tree, oh wow, that's, this is gonna be a tall stack. I don't know, it, it, you know, in my head, it worked, but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> oh, yay. It, it, it worked well in my head as a thought experiment, but now I'm looking at the scale of this. These bales are a lot bigger when you actually get down to it. <laughs> it, it worked well in my head. So let's see if we can get this up here. This is going to... Um, one of those things. When I pulled up next to it, yeah, it looked. Oh, no, 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 no. 
crap. Yeah, it's one of those things. It, it works in your head, but maybe not necessarily so much in practice. All right. There's a couple things we can do. It's very carefully. Get this down here. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab the wheel loader and... Yeah, let's maybe work with that because it, it it worked fine in my head until I saw it in you know the scale of it. Let's get our bail spike and see what we can do with this. I didn't account for the loader dropping them as it did on the trailer. I got it backed up fine, which was what I was most worried about. Now let me see what are the controls for this thing. Once my control switch over, there we go. All right. This kind of has an easy mode operation, which is going to help us here because the point of the trailer is to make this faster, and it's only faster if we can efficiently do this. All right, let's see if we can get these off of the chassis of the truck. All right, I think the easiest way to load them is actually going to be like this. I'm not the best wheel loader driver in the world for sure. All right, the fertilizing is done on field four. Now, let's do a little maneuver here. Whoops. I was just trying to knock that one bale off so we had room to put these on here. That was unexpected and a little, uh, yeah, let's hop in here real quick. That's always a good idea to do that in between so you don't knock over what you have on there. I didn't expect what happened up there to happen. We got some like Minecraft looking action up there. So let's, let's just ignore that and let's get this. On the trailer. I think this is still faster than running the trip to the store. It's a couple miles there and back. And making all those trips, I think this is still a better idea. Why didn't it come off the... There we go. So let's grab this immersion breaking deal up here. There we go. And, oh, there's the bale that we tossed off the edge. Let's grab it. Yeah, this is actually not as slow as I thought it might be doing it this way. All right. We are good to remove these strappies for the moment. Because I need to push that stack a little bit. On a smaller farm, I would be happy doing this with a, uh, a regular bale spike that doesn't auto load like this one. But as this is the one that we had in the store, I'm fine with that. Oh, we can't push him because psh, it's because of the way this particular... Actually, we can. There is a trick we can do. If we set these here very carefully... I don't know what just happened. Yeah, I do. That was my bad. All right, that's good. 
uh, there's no need to have it as long as they're on there and actually they, they are much straighter than I thought as long as they're on there and they'll get to the store that's all we really need so yeah I think this this works we'll just keep doing it like this let's shut this guy down and let's get back to bailing let's turn in that contract too and get our money because that's done we'll clean up the I'll clean up the equipment here in in a minute on my own so fertilizing completed collect 41,000 and yeah so that's complete let's get back to this and we're going to finish this in the next episode in next episode we will also be doing some yeah more bail jockeying now that i see how that works um i think it should be interesting to see how i end up arranging the rest of them on here so tune in next episode as we finish this and move on through April into May and maybe even get to our soybean sale. And that's going to be a huge sale, possibly bigger, probably actually, yeah, that's going to be a bigger sale than we had last year in December. We're going to have a ton of money, maybe invest in some land. Who knows? That's going to come up in the next couple of episodes. I'll see you then, guys. Uh, leave a comment below. I'd love your input on how everything's going. And if you like the video, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to follow along with the series. Check back. There's more of this pretty much every day. A lot going on here in Big Flats, Texas. Thanks all. See you next time.